Okay, guys, I'm really excited to introduce to you um, Jana Strunk. And so Jana is a senior sales director. She started in May of 2003 um, to get a discount and fell in love with the culture of amazing women. Um, became a sales director of the RISE unit September 1st, 2005 for flexibility, more time with family, and to replace $30,000 income. She's done Queen's Court of Sales six times, sharing five times, triple star four times, highest unit club 450,000, nine times um, in circle of achievement, I think a circle of achievement unit. So that's when you do 300,000 to up to 500,000 or 550 actually, I think. Um, star consultant, 79 quarters, um, earned the all expense paid Bahama cruise for her and Paul, has earned seven Mary Kay cars, including three pink Cadillacs, currently um, taking the cash for car, has an offspring, Rosemary Kane, highest commission check in one month, not including sales, over almost $13,000. Her vision and mission is to build a national area to give women choices and to give them the opportunity to grow personally and financially, giving them total flexibility and freedom. Um, she's married to Paul. She has um, two sons, Gavin, 19, and Garrett, 14. And she lives in Wamego, Kansas. Is that right? Wamego, Kansas. And um, so you guys, I um, asked Jenna, I go, share your shifts. Since that conversation we had, I'm hearing a shift in your recruiting, who you're asking, who you're sitting down with. And you could call it your chicken list. You could call it your... Um, oh, she probably wouldn't want to do it list or I'll get around to it list. When you said unicorn yesterday, I'm like, that is such a good, like I saw Debbie Moore as a unicorn and Mary Kay Ash as a unicorn. Like they're, they're so, they're different and they stand out in their difference. And then any advice that you have, because now I mean, we have these women want to get into DIQ, they're getting on target for um, Cadillacs or earning Cadillacs by Christmas. So personal recruiting between now and Saturday night is critical. This is not business as usual. Um, you know, and this, if people are listening to it later, even if it's not the end of the month, what if we would operate in Mary Kay like it was always the end of the month? And what about the end of the month in June? That would be fantastic. So Jana, I'm gonna pass this off to you. Uh, what would you like to share with these women this morning? Well, Don, first of all, I'm just so honored that you had asked me to be part of this. So ladies, I'm just honored. I've prayed over you all. I pray that you hear, even if it doesn't come out of my lips, whatever the Lord puts on your heart today and hopefully something special that comes out of my lips. But anyway, so um, just, I was so blessed and I never wanted to really bother Dawn. And, um, but when we had our first conversation and she asked me why I wanted to become a national sales director and she encouraged me to make a list of what I was looking for. And one of the mind shifts that I had initially is that she said, and I've told my unit this, I've, I've shared this with other directors, that when you tell people, when you give a description of what exactly you're looking for, you give them a space to be able to join you. you say, this is what I'm looking for. In fact, um, I made my list and I'm like, just like, cause it's football season and I'm a chiefs fan. And so I say, just like any amazing team, we are looking specifically for people with certain skills. And so I'm looking for authentic, godly women that love to help people that love growth and love flexibility, that love being the boss, love being part of a winning team. Women who are hungry, hungry for more and energy giving, confident collaborators that love to be part of, of an amazing community that's lifting people up. Women that hate drama. Is that you? Is that someone you know? And so when I, when I, I've created that within 24 hours after the conversation with Dawn and, and by the way, you know, this is going to be for your long game. I'll give you some strategy ideas for your short game for DIQ, but, but, you know, have this in mind and, you know, be working on this because I think it is important for you to give them a space to say, oh, well, that is me. That does describe me. That does describe someone I know. And so the more that I was speaking this, 
at every recruiting opportunity, at every event that I had an opportunity to be in front of someone, even if it's one-on-one -on -one or in front of my unit, I was sharing this in front of my team. I was sharing this. And so something that I feel like it did is it is changing the lens at which I'm looking through. And as I'm looking at some of these people, so I already had scheduled a time to get together with my friend, Jen. So Jen and I are um, older kids are the same age and they actually dated for about a year and our youngest kids um, play basketball together. And so um, Jen is a, she's a doctor. She's a, um, she was a college athlete. Her kids, she, the way that she works with her kids, she's taking her kid, like her, one of her, her daughter, her, um, her daughter, Liv, it plays college volleyball. Her son will play some type of professional baseball. And so it's, and she's right there coaching and mentoring her family. And she's, you know, a, a veterinarian. Her husband's a veterinarian and she is a champion in all she does. And we were getting together for coffee and I thought, Jana, she's not using Mary Kay skincare, but she is using a lot of Mary Kay color. Why have you not offered the opportunity to her? And so when you get that shift and you start looking at people in a different way. And so since then, okay. So I've started looking at the people like um, Hannah Zur. Hannah is a remarkable mom and a leader and she's on social media and she's confident enough, confident enough to be out there. So I'm like, I'm sending her a miracle set. I send her a mini miracle set. I'm like, hey, give that a try for me, would you please? I want to get your opinion on this. Um, it's, you know, something that I'm working on. And then we set up a career talk since. Um, Mara, Mara Kennedy is actually um, the strength trainer for the University of Oklahoma's softball team, number one in the nation. And so that's who I want to recruit. I want to recruit the people like it is in my heart for this company to soar. If I'm not going to be that inner circle national sales director, I want to recruit one. I want to play part of God's plan for this company. And so let's be that person. You know, who is it in your midst that could be that person? And so I think that um, that has kind of opened things up and just, I just started looking for different people. And when I was visiting with one of them, um, probably uh, like a month ago, and by the way, there's this young girl, we had our house painted by College Works. And so there was this young girl that actually came and said, well, the guy that was supposed to do this, he did not, um, he didn't follow through. They've given me your job. That girl came, painted my entire house, showed up. She was a go-getter. She was open to new opportunities. I sent her home with the miracle set. She came back the next day, said she loved the products. And Sarah is also a unicorn. And that's the first time I used that verbiage. I'm like, oh, you know, you are a young lady that is totally committed to doing the work. And, and I told her, I'm like, you're a unicorn. You're who I'm looking for. And so are you telling people confidently, you are who I'm looking for? And if this is totally not for you, that's okay. Because what I would love for you to do is since you are such a, you have such special qualities, four eyes are better than two. This is what I'm looking for. Would you look with me? Would you be a talent scout and look for these types of women with me. If this is totally not for you, I get it. And a lot of times when I'm working with leaders, um, dominant women, when you're working with D personalities, I totally take that away from people right out of the gate. You know what, Susie, this is probably the last thing that you would ever do, but I just thank you so much for hearing the facts about Mary Kay. Cause it might be for someone that, you know, and you know what dominant personalities don't want to be told what they don't want to be recruited by the way they want they're honored when you tell them that you are who they're looking for but they're going into a conversation if you say i want to share the facts about mary Kay with you they're going into that with a wall up because i did 
unless you tear that wall down and just say, you know what, this is probably the last thing that you would ever do. And I get that. Okay. You can tell me no when we're done. But if I could just share this with you, because this is my goal, this is my mission, this is what I'm looking for. And so right now, if you are looking to go into DIQ by the end of the month, you have to be working with intention and you have to be working with obedience, by the way. And so if God says, go to Home Depot and pick up something for your house, you're probably supposed to do that. I did that one time when I was finishing up the quarter sharing and I'm like, are you serious? There's three days left. And I met someone at the checkout that joined my team and came in qualified. So obedience above all else is so important. So, um, and strategy right now, are you telling people I'm looking for, this is how many people I'm looking for. And where are you looking? If I were you, I would know exactly who you're looking for and you have to make a backup plan to your backup plan right now. So when people have just a plan for, okay, so let's see, I need three active people. So I'm talking to three people. No, you should be talking to about 21 people. And so, um, and if you have, well, three people said, yes, yes, that's right. But things happen at the last minute. And so what I would be looking for, who are the champions in your life that you can be sharing with? Who are your customers that are ordering at least $300 a year? Because honestly, that's enough for, to get them active, right? And so like, this is last minute stuff. I don't usually recruit on the basis of, oh my gosh, you've ordered $300. You could order at least once a year because I don't want to sow that minimum mentality into the situation. But when it's last minute, you have to do what you have to do to get over the line because that's, that, that is what it is. You know, you have a goal and that is to get into DIQ. Okay. So the short game is I would go to my customers. Plus I would print out the report that tells you how much all of your customers spent this last year. And then I would get on there with a highlighter and highlight the people that spent over $300. And then I would put stars by your unicorns that are on your list. And maybe even put a special star on people that spent over 600 because what's better than starting active, qualified for sure. And they could, what is a blessing to them? You know what, Susie, this might be the last thing that you would ever do, but I've noticed that your spending habits in the last year you could benefit from this. And when you start Mary Kay with that level of product for you and, and Christmas is coming up, shop for Christmas. You know, get your people that are coming in to think, okay, now with your first order, let's make sure that you go through the catalog and look at everything that you would order if you could get it for half price. And what about Christmas gifts? Because that time is upon us. And so that way you can increase that order. Who are your family members? Who are your family members that love Mary Kay, that want to be part of your dream? And I also think that verbiage is so important. People want to be part of something. They really want to help you reach your goal. And so know your goal tell people what your goal is and tell them how they can support that goal and how they can be part of that. So Don, first of all, I really want to get whatever your stat sheet is um, that, that you had. Um, how long do you want me to speak? What, is there anything else that you want me to share about? Um, you know, we have time. Does anyone Maybe the um, directors that are on, what would you like Jana to share on that you feel would benefit um, the women going into DIQ? Because all of the things that she shares for someone to do a push to get into DIQ is also the exact same things to get into a Cadillac by Christmas because those personal qualifieds are the game changer moving up car levels. Um, that what is, would you like her to share or expound on? 
in, in also too, DIQs question, like not a specific, like this, like something that is broad based, not like this one person's conversation, because that may not apply to anyone else. So more broad based questions that you have, because I want you getting off of this and saying, okay, game on, like not, I need to call my director for a strategy to finish up the month. Like you get off of this and you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, six full days to get into DIQ, six full days to get your production and your personal recruiting where you need to for Cadillac by Christmas. What do you need to know before this ends for that to happen? Hey, Jana, um, could I have you <laughs> pretend that you have nobody on your team and you need eight by the end of this month to go into DIQ, um, what your strategy would be as far as doing that? What I would do, first of all, is I would make my list. I would spend a couple of minutes. And by the way, um, I'm an activator. I'm an action person. So make your list and don't spend a lot of time right now. You need to be with people. You need to be having conversations with people, but spend 10 minutes, make your list. You know, who's on your hot list, who are your clients? So I would look at my client list. Number one, because those are your people that are more recruitable because they love the product. And so get your client list and go to work. And what appointments do you already have going on this week? And who are the people that if you think, okay, this person is a champion in my life, if they were ever going to do Mary Kay, schedule an appointment with them. If you can get in front of them to, to try the product, I would obviously do that and recruit at the same time. The other day, um, Saturday, when I was doing a party on Saturday, I told them, I said, oh my gosh, you guys, we're going to have so much fun today. We're going to share some product. And we just shared it on, on the back of the hand. And I said, and when we're done, if you have a couple of minutes to listen to the facts about Mary Kay, then I'm going to give you a gift. And so I recruited someone right there. She signed up at the table. And so it doesn't take a month to layer people. You can sign people up right now. And then I would schedule an appointment and I would act or get together with them right now. Say, well, let's look at this. You know, what would you most be, a, what, what are you most excited about? And then boom, 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 you know, get them in the process of placing their order and, um, you know, getting in immediately. And so mm -hmm. who are your family members? So be talking to everybody that is on your list and have a sense of urgency. So Don and I also talked about something that I um, heard the other day on the, um, somebody had come back from the top director's trip and was on a conference call and they talked about your dream being your baby, which Andrea Newman talked about it. And I remember after our conversation, Don, I remember she talked about it being a big, fat, juicy baby. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> anyway, so your baby, your dream is your baby. DIQ or Cadillac. Do you put your baby down and ignore your baby? Or are you making sure your baby is fed, nurtured, cared for? You don't lay down and ignore your baby and you can't lay down and ignore your dream. This is the most important thing you've got going on right now. Okay. It's the urgency. So have a sense of urgency. Don't lay it down. Don't put it aside. When you're in the grocery store shopping, you should be thinking about your baby. You should be thinking about your dream. You should be thinking about, I wonder if that lady right there has a Mary Kay Beauty Consultant. Mm -hmm. And be obedient in that. Be obedient. If God's nudging you to call somebody, that's who you need to call right now. Because he's working behind the scenes. And I've always trusted. I've always said, Lord God, if you will do the heart work, I will do the footwork. I will do the footwork and I will speak whatever you want me to speak, even if people think I'm crazy. And I will take a chance. I will go out on the limb. And so just get after it. That's what I would say is if you need eight right now, it's time, it's go time. And so I would also change my verbiage to say, 
you know what, Susie? You could be part of something big. I'm breaking a record. I'm going into DIQ in one week. Will you be part of that? How's that sound? I'd like to be part of a winning team and someone doing okay. something. And it's and, that sense, a sense of urgency that, I mean, right now you just naturally have it, which serves us really well. Because people, if you give them a whole month or even a whole day to decide about a $125 decision or $100 decision, actually this month, um, it's it's too long. Yes, absolutely. And another thing that I will tell you is that my friend Jen that I spoke with the other day was honored. She said, I am humbled and honored that you would ask me. And I said, seriously, it scared me. I said, it scared me because I said, honestly, you know, I didn't come into meeting you for coffee with a plan to share the facts about Mary Kay, but God put it on my heart and I want to be obedient to him. And so people are going to be honored that you want them and champions want to be led by a leader, someone that is courageous enough to step out of their comfort zone and say, hey, this is what's going on. So anyway, you guys, this is my helper this morning and she needs to go out. So I'm gonna, so my husband, he'll come and, and let Chloe out. But anyway, she was whining and everything. So I thought, I'm just gonna lift her up and let her let her hang out. So what else would Chloe. you- <laughs> Hi, Chloe. Can you say hi? <laughs> Aw, the live teddy bear. Right. So, and get things in place so people can take care of the dog, make the meals. You mm -hmm. can't, you can't be everybody to everyone mm -hmm. in one week when you're going into DIQ. So make mm -hmm. the plan, you know, get mm -hmm. that, get things in place. And it, it, when you say yes to the good, you're saying no to the big stuff. Okay. So when you're saying, ah, yes, I will take on that chore from like volunteering at church or even family. So this week um, we have an event tomorrow. I have um, Melinda Gonzalez is coming in from corporate. And so I um, have a, have an event. And so my husband knows that I'm not cooking supper. I'm not taking the dog to the groomer there. Those aren't things that are, that I'm going to do because this is what, this is what's important for our family right now. And so this business is a family business. And so enroll them in your vision as well. Mm -hmm. Well, and I love, um, you know, when it's God family career, when you're doing things in that order, you know, there's people will use their family as an excuse. They'll use God as an excuse. Um, and I'm sure God's not happy about that. And your family isn't happy about it either. And it always makes me sad down the line when the family, the kids, the husband, the family needs something that you know, you can see, I can see so clearly God intended for Mary Kay to fill that gap and they don't have that gap filled because she didn't choose to do it because of fill in the blank, mm -hmm. um, because of my kids, you didn't do it, but now you don't have this to help them towards their dream because they have a baby too. You know, they have a dream that God's given them and something that um, they need to do and your dream is at attached to that and you reaching your um, goals and bringing this dream to fruition, a healthy baby um, that's born, you know, rapidly. Um, and I picture these times, you know, they're in labor right now to get this baby out. Um, and it's not fun. <laughs> it's not pleasant. It's not really something to, I, I've never heard any, you know, expectant mom go, I am so excited about this whole going into labor process. This is going to be awesome from what I heard, you know, and, and everyone's is different. And so you don't really even know what to prepare yourself for. I've never heard that because I don't know who would say that you'd have to be crazy. Um, but it is worth it. Every single mom on the other side, even no matter how torturous or long, the you know story is then they have another one it, they do it again and so you know it's the same thing it's not this week can't look like any other week you've had because you haven't pushed 
at this level before. Um, but when you wake up on Sunday morning, like, is there going to be a baby in the bassinet? And then like, okay, now we got to grow the baby. Now we got to keep this baby alive. And that is going to be your DIQ team. That is going to be your on-target Cadillac team, your new team members to work with. <clears throat> and Mary Kay, we like taking care of the babies. It's fun. You know, that that's the fun part. But it's kind of like in real life. You don't really um, look forward to the labor part, but that might be a mindset shift. Like, this is going to be fun. I can't wait to see what happens because on the other side of this on Sunday, like what, what do I want to be either celebrating or resetting a time frame again? Like, this always has to happen. The baby doesn't come out without the labor process and without the push. So is the push going to be this week? Or are you going to wait until the end of October um, when people are out trick-or-treating and you're trying to track them down? Or do you want to do it in November when some people take one month to cook a turkey? Or you could do it in December when they take the full 24 days plus after the holidays to get stuff going. Like the unicorns are going to do it regardless of those things, but you need some other non-unicorns to fill in the gaps in your unit because no one has a team of eight unicorns. No one has a team of 100 unicorns. It doesn't happen. There's one unicorn in every 50. And because someone's a unicorn in another stage of life or another uh, circle of life, you don't know if she'll be a unicorn in Mary Kay or not, but she brings in unicorn customers and she brings in unicorn future team members. And that's where curating those Facebook groups of customers is so smart because birds of a feather do flock together. They do. So unicorn is kind of a different, uh, fancier way of talking about target market. Mm -hmm. It really is. But some people are target market and they're still not unicorns. Let's be clear. And there may be unicorns that aren't target market. I wasn't when I started. I wasn't. I didn't hit three of the five marketing statistics. But I was a unicorn inside and I knew it. Because when I looked at these other people that I had graduated from business school with and was recruited to work with, I'm like, I, we're not the same. We're like, not. This is not the same DNA. Any other questions for Jana? Or we have a couple minutes if you'd want to share a statement she made or, um, you know, what her conversation has been a catalyst. So, you know, I know when Jana, when I listened to that and I asked her and she could do it and she's an hour earlier. Are you an hour or two earlier? One hour One. earlier. One hour earlier than us. Um, and then I know that, you know, she's sharing what, you know, she knows God wanted to, to, sh to share and to be deposited. What did you take away from that? What, what are you taking away from that, from this? A couple of people say that or statements and... We'll head into our last week of September, first quarter of this year. And what I love about Mary Kay is it doesn't matter what the whole, it doesn't matter really what the last 11 weeks look like. Mary Kay only cares what it looks like by Saturday night. That's all they care about is Saturday night. So good morning, Jana, Deborah Johnson. Um, I've got pages here, but I'm, I'm going to say that the four eyes are better than two in offering, I think the breaking down the barrier, because my chicken list is similar to everyone else's, right? It's women who you think, yeah, hey, yeah, she's got it all together, but breaking that down immediately and just kind of soliciting her as more of your, you know, your um, talent scout and then, you know, honoring her because of her characteristics, but not really, it's like skirting around it. So that, I like that because I think there are women that I know. Well, I don't think. I know there are women I've avoided. And I, I believe that's going to help me have that conversation in a different mm -hmm. way. So they don't feel like I'm coming at them, you know, to like have this conversation for a certain purpose that's personal to them. They can, you know, kind of get the wall down and just have a conversation. So thank you for that. You're welcome, Deborah. And, you know, when you were speaking, it just reminded me that you know, when we're looking at these people's lives, usually the champion people that are the unicorns, they are so busy in life that sometimes they didn't, they don't have like, okay, so my friend, Jen, she's a veterinarian. She's a wife. She's 
you know, a mom to these kids and she's guiding them and mentoring them to be a champion, but she really doesn't have something for herself. Okay. Women want something for themselves. People that are great moms want something for themselves. They want their identity. And that is key. That is so important to point that out as well. And, you know, recruiting is just sales. Like if you were to go to sell a product, you would find a need and fill it. You would ask them their skin type. You wouldn't just walk into a skincare class and just throw some stuff on a tray and say, slap that on. Well, stop recruiting like that. Stop recruiting like you're just slamming some facts against them. Because when I listened to Jen and she was talking about, oh, I'm busy doing this. I'm busy going here. I'm busy going here. And then she said, oh my gosh, this last weekend, um, Brian and Barack were gone to a ball tournament and Liv was um, working at the fire department. The house was so quiet. I've never heard those sounds in the house. And so what I'm thinking is when she's an empty nester, she's going to be like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Yeah. You know, so one, she, other, one other so thing that, told her about that one thing that you just triggered for me, because I I'd like to look at myself as a champion in my life and career. We also masquerade, right? We yes. make sure that everyone thinks we got it all together and we're strong and we're resilient and we're going to get through anything and everything. And sometimes that's just the mask, right? It's the masquerade we're putting on and we really do need. So, yeah, I think that's been the most powerful thing that that you've shared this morning. So thank you again. Thank you so much, Deborah. Mm -hmm. Jana, I just wanted to tell you, I was one of those people that was um, definitely a D personality, not willing to be recruited. If I was even asked, you wouldn't get my name, you wouldn't get my number, you'd get immediate no. So dropping down those barriers was a great reminder because those are the people that I'm looking for is the action people. Right. And just kind of like you were just saying, just to piggyback is, um, I was looking for something for myself that I didn't know I was looking for. I didn't know I lost myself into work and everything else. So, you know, Mary Kay opened up that fund me, that um, mm -hmm. silly me, but yet a place where I can be serious and and teach and, and help other people. So you get those feel goods as well. And I have walked in to places obediently, not realizing that I was going to be talking Mary Kay, meeting anybody or somebody to join my team. So that that reminder of being obedience that, you know, if, you know, not if God will always do the work, it's like, are, am I going to be obedient to do the work and walk through it? So I, uh, you just brought back that, that, uh, that, um, shit ink grin that it worked if I did the work and it really did work. So I just need to do more of it. Thank so, you. Sounds good. Okay. So another thing is you all, those of you that are wanting to go into the IQ, you want to be part of that Bible study that I'm part of because seriously, some of the leaders are extraordinary. And of course, Don started this whole thing. And so something that um, when you were talking about being obedient, you know, I say every morning now, because this is something that one of the leaders was, um, we're talking, we're, we're doing the book of Ephesians and it talks about being united, united with our father. And so I'm like, this morning, Papa, take me to work with you today. What are we, who are we going to talk to today? What, what do you have on my plate today? So you, yeah, that obedience is really big. And by the way, if you go first, you know, I've always like, you guys, I have like 75 people on my team. Like my personal team is a team of about 75. That's why like there are sales directors that have equivalent numbers of unit members, but my paycheck's higher because I'm going to go recruit the champions. And so go recruit all of those act, action minded, you know, leaders. And so that's, you go mm -hmm. first, you go through the gate first. Right. Yep. Yeah. Your paycheck's a lot bigger. It's, I mean, hugely different. There's my director management or director's money management. It's an audio training um, that's on my YouTube. I did it couple decades ago. So directors even make more now because bonuses are bigger than they used to be. But I compare a director doing 6,000 wholesale for her unit um, that no one's on her personal team, just a few. And then one that is like half and half and one that is almost predominantly all her personals like yours. And the difference just at 6,000 wholesale is over $23,000 in income in the year. It's huge huge. So, I mean, no amount of product sold can make up for that. 
you know, and when people say, well, I'm the only one in my team recruiting, good. Keep it that way for a long time. Eventually someone's going to catch on, you know, be the leader of the marching band, not turning around and leading the orchestra in the pit because that 50% on the product sales, but you know what, 26% plus all the recruiting bonuses you guys get and unit recruiting bonuses that you get and that turns into stars all those bonuses add up. So it's probably far more than 23,000 now because new directors didn't have $4,000 opportunity in their first year. And people, bonuses. Can't, people can't stand next to the fire without getting hot. Yeah. And so are you hot? Are you running hot? That is mm -hmm. so key. Are you full of passion? Are you excited? Are you ignited? Or are you... Are you running the ship that's really quiet and and I'm not gonna say boring because I'm mm -hmm. but I'm just saying that are you hot? And when my when my unit sees me recruiting and they're like, I get I get messages from people, oh my goodness, you're on fire. You are rocking it. I'm like, come on, sister, come with me. Mm -hmm. People can't stand next to the fire without getting warm. Mm -hmm. And so you're gonna you're gonna ignite that fire. On your team, if you're earning Cadillac, on your team, if you are, you know, going into DIQ, you're starting the flame right now. Mm -hmm. In DIQ, you start to qualify for your Cadillacs too. Amen. And if you're on fire and they don't catch on fire, there was nothing you could do. Amen. So many directors are like waiting for their people to go on fire. Like if I do more, if I say different, if I'm a better leader, it, it, it doesn't matter. If you're on fire and they don't catch on fire, they're never catching on fire. Like if you can blow fire into them, it's not going to last because it's not from within. It's not ignited from within. So it's better use of time for you to stay on fire, forward focused, and then run with the people who are catching on fire. Um, because if you have to sit there with the blowtorch on them the whole time, and every time their fire gets disappointed or frustrated or bailed out, you have to continue to fire start them. You, that's not how this is set up. This is set up to lead. Mary Kay said three ways, by example, by example, by example. All right, does everyone feel like they have their marching orders for the next six days? Ready to roll? Okay, I will get you guys uh, Jana's address to pop her a love note. Thank you so much for joining us. I will have this recording posted in your guys' focus group, Boxers and Jana, I'll get it to you also, but thank you. I appreciate it. And would you be at seminar or at leadership conference with Sapphire? I'm in Ruby. So I think we go with Emerald this year. So you're the first one. Yeah. We're first. The first one. Okay. I was hoping maybe we'd overlap. Well, I can see. People it can it. meet you. Well, maybe, maybe in like between. It. That might be kind of fun. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. All, All right, right, you guys have an awesome day. Thank you, ladies. Have a great day and go get them. You can do it.